Oh, and welcome to Just One More Watch. And welcome today to the multiverse. A reality where every tiny decision you make leads to the creation of an entirely new parallel universe where that decision is actualized. For example, this is the universe where my life was stress-free and I retained all the color in my hair. This is the universe where I never made my first video and so Just One More Watch just doesn't exist. And this is the universe where I actually became the used car salesman that lurks within me. She's a lovely little runner. Hold out your hand. This is the universe where the Stingray didn't get Steve Irwin, so I don't have a bronze statue of him in my backdrop. And this is the universe where Casios cost $9,000. <laughs> You mean there's actually a Casio that cost $9,000? Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Indeed, let's. But before we get into the box, a big thank you once again to Sydney subscriber Peter. Not only has he loaned me his shiny MTG 9 grand Casio, he also loaned me his Boulevard Lunar Pilot, his special edition Seiko 5s, and his Tudor 1926. Thank you once again, Peter, for loaning me such a fantastic and really interesting selection of watches. All right, let's talk price. Now, I'm sure you've worked out my trick by now. I even told you about it in this old video where I was lying to my wife. If I want to downplay a price, I quote in US dollars. If I want to exaggerate a price, I quote in Australian dollars. Perhaps I should start quoting in Zimbabwean dollars, the $400 trillion Casio, etc., etc. The headline price on today's thumbnail reflects the maximum price I could find for one of these nine grand plus on Discovery Mall Japan. They claim that 33 people added this to their cart. I don't think so. I think that might be a bit of a fudge. In fact, the whole price might be a bit of a fudge. Having said that, they're on eBay for around five grand Aussie once you get it over here. And even on Chrono 24, they are between two and a half and three and a half thousand Australian dollars. Now these were two grand Aussie brand new. That's how much Peter paid for his one. So he's quids in, regardless of where you want one of these, you cannot find one for the asking price anymore. They were 1100 USD at the time. The lowest US dollar price I could find on one of these was about 1650. So folks, it is possible to speculate on a Casio. You can buy a Casio and then make profit on it by flipping it afterwards if you buy the right Casio. And this MTG limited edition seems to be the right Casio. Peter bought it for himself as a birthday present two years ago and you see the stickers, he has never worn it. So it is not going to be a full warts and all review today, folks. I'm not going to fully deflower, depeel the stickers off of this one. I don't think that would be fair. He hasn't quite decided what he wants to do with this one yet, so I don't want to ruin the retail value by stripping it. I will take the case sticker off. We'll still have a good look at it though. I just was really keen to see it. I want to know what people spent $2,000 on in the first place and are prepared to pay considerably more than that in the aftermarket. This, by the way, is the MTG-B2000PH-2ADR, also known as the Blue Phoenix. After this mythical creature, meaning rebirth and prosperity, etc., etc. Okay, so nice and delicately then, let's peel this main sticker of my first encounter with an MTG. I've done plenty of G-Shock and I have worked my way up pretty much the entire Oceanus JDM line of watches, but I've never looked at an MTG or an MRG. So what do you get for your not inconsiderable sum of cash? Well, you're clearly getting a tough solar movement, sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance, a carbon monocoque. But I think more to the point, you're getting a limited edition watch in an outrageous color. That is just ridiculous. It's ion plated, it's base plated with this blue color, and then they add other colors on top. They add a kind of red and yellow treatment on top, meaning that each and every one of these MTG Blue Phoenixes is unique. It looks slightly marginally different from all the others. So what do you get for your two grand slash nine grand then? Well, you got a fair chunk of watch from all angles, really. I measure it at 46 and a half across the diagonal. I'm gonna give you a second diameter dimension today. 
Across the middle, including the crown, 51 millimeters. This is a big boy. 15.2 mil thick reflects that also, but 48 mil lug to lug. Now I'm taking that from the center of those two hinges there. So it's actually gonna be reasonably wearable if rather chunky. I will show you on wrist later. Lug width, definitely not applicable today due to the integrated nature of this resin band. Despite the fact that it only has a translucent, you can just about see the light going through that one, translucent blue resin band, it still weighs in at 130 grams. It is a big boy. It's the first G-Shock I've seen with flat sapphire crystal. All G-Shocks have 200 meters of water resistance, and this has a Casio module 5636, whirling all of those hands around when you press the corresponding buttons. Yeah, I thought you might have got a metal band for your two grand, but apparently not. It is all nicely done though. This is comfortable, there's plenty of holes, good amount of flex to it as well, with some nice IP coated gold hardware, just in case there wasn't enough bling elsewhere on the watch. But this is all really good looking here. You've got little hex head bolts and screws holding the whole thing together. Yeah, it's still a G-Shock at the end of the day, and it has to pass muster in certain areas, that being robustness and longevity for sure. So what does a two grand G-Shock do then? Well, it kind of works as a combination of an Oceanus and a 2100B kind of solar Bluetooth Cassie Oak, if you see what I mean. Plenty going on in the dial. You've got the three central hands indicating the home time. When it's in this home time mode as it is now, the sub register up there at the 10.30 is a 24 hour of the home time. So we're at just after half one in the afternoon as opposed to half one in the morning. There's a day of the week indicator here, much like there is on a 2100, you can have an entirely second time zone, an independent second time zone set on that register down there at the seven o'clock. This one is Bluetooth, it is solar, it is also radio controlled, so if you live in a zone where you get the atomic clock signal, you will never need to set it. Standard four button layout, A, B, C, D, reset, light mode, and start. If you press the mode button once, it puts it into stopwatch mode. As you can see, this then resets up to the 12, and you can stop, start, and reset the stopwatch as you normally would. So it's second hand, minute, hours, and an even 24 hour indicator of the stopwatch down there as well. Stop and reset. Next up, you have a timer mode that multifunction hand moves around to timer. It's set for 10 minutes at the moment. If I start that, it will count down from 10 minutes. There we are, counting backwards from 10 minutes. A little bit freaky. Stop that, reset that, and the next is an alarm. At this point, this little sub register down here, you can set an alarm in there. Second hand, the central second hand indicates whether it's on or off. You have got the capacity as you have with the Casiokes to hold down the A button and the hands move out of the way. All very nice, all very neat and tidy, all very, very colorful to boot. Let's swap to the macro lens then and have a look at this outrageous color scheme. They named it after a phoenix, they should have named it after a parrot, I reckon that thing is bonkers. Yeah, so many different colors. Unique, everyone unique as discussed, not just the ion coated case either. Have a look at the number of different colors in the dial. We've got green, there's pink, there's a bit of orange there, there's red, there's heaps of blue. Even the MTG has got that kind of rainbow spectrum effect. It changes color depending on the angle, the indices, also high polished striped blues with orange above them. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a show off this one, is it not? It's perhaps not quite as colorful after dark though. They don't tend to go mad with the loom on G-Shocks, a little bit on the hands, a little bit on the indices, but the top right button, the B pusher, operates a single white LED located down near the six o'clock. Nice fade in, nice fade out on that. That's really what you'll be using to see this one after dark. If you don't want to link it to your phone via the app, if you don't want to use the atomic clock signal, you can of course adjust this watch manually by unscrewing the crown. Again, first time I've seen a screw down crown on a G-Shock as well, it's a lovely kind of whirlpool crown. Yeah, all pushers are made of metal, all pushers are beautifully worked, and they've continued that iron plating on the back of the watch as well. They haven't just stopped at the front. And as we saw earlier on, carbon monocoque, carbon case back to there, very nice. And that is what a nine grand G-Shock looks like on wrist. The last time I had this much money on my wrist, 
it was in the form of a Rolex and not a Casio. Yeah, big and chunky. Let me pull it in a little better, give you a bit more of a representative view. The lug to lug in itself isn't huge, but yeah, it's a beast of a watch, 130 grams and 51 mil, including the crown. Yeah, this one wrist presence to say the least. Let's do a bit of an outdoor macro montage to wrap up today then. Is this thing worth 9,000 Aussie? No, don't be daft. Is it worth 2,000 Aussie? Well, clearly it is, especially if people are prepared to pay more than that for it. I think it's probably worth about two grand Aussie on its own terms anyway, just for the quality of that case finish, the lovely pushers, the way the whole thing has been put together and the tech that you get with a decent quality Casio module. You can get all of those features or most of those features cheaper elsewhere in either the G-Shock or the Oceanus range as discussed, but I get these. I get why people love these watches and they collect these watches. It's a top-end limited edition product from a very, very well-known and well-respected global brand that does everything you could possibly want from your watch and plenty more besides. And if you get one at retail, it's not actually mind-blowingly expensive. But would I personally wear it? Uh, no, it's far, far too big and far, far too blingy for me but I get the appeal, I really do, and this won't be my last MTG, this won't be my last MRG on the channel. I've got a taste for these things now. I'm gonna see if I can try and find one that I might actually wear myself personally. That could actually be a bit of a challenge. So there you have it, three grand, six grand, nine grand, regardless, that is a bloody expensive Casio, but it's a Casio that is undoubtedly worth more than Peter paid for it in the first place. So you can speculate on these watches if you are so inclined to. Can't see myself ever paying quite that much for a special edition G-Shock though. I'll stick to my 5600s for about $150. Thanks very much. If you wanna see a couple more expensive Casios though, click here or click here. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you again in a future video.